My name is Lauren Wendell, and I'm president of the Lucy Foundation, whose threefold message is to honor master photographers, to discover and cultivate emerging photographers, and to promote the appreciation of photography worldwide. Our signature event is the Lucy Awards, which if all goes as planned, which we know has not been the case this year, but we're very hopeful, we'll be holding the awards October 19th in New York City at Carnegie Hall. Please go online at lucyfoundation.org to see all of our programs and more information about the Lucy Awards. It is now my pleasure to introduce Alice Dyson, Program Director at the Lucy Foundation, who will introduce today's program. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Hello, everyone. As mentioned, I'm Program Director for the Lucy Foundation. Thank you for joining us today for this live conversation with Antoine Sargent and Christophe Wiesner. Antoine is an art critic, writer, curator, and author of The New Black Vanguard, Photography Between Art and Fashion, which is published by Aperture, and is additionally the winner of the 2020 Lucy Photo Book Prize competition under the traditional category. Here's a little excerpt taken from Aperture's the New Black Vanguard Photography Between Art and Fashion presents 15 artists who vibrant portraits and conceptual images fuse the genres of art and fashion photographies in ways to break down the long established boundaries. The images open up conversations around the roles of black body and black lives as subject matter. Collectively, they celebrate black creativity and the cross pollination between art, fashion and cultural in constructing an image. Christoph Wiesner, director of Recontre d'Arles, will be moderating this conversation and speaking with Antoine about the book as well as his upcoming exhibition at the festival in Arles this summer. Additionally, Arles is a 2019 Lucy honoree for the Spotlight Award. We hope you enjoy this conversation. Please be sure to leave any questions you may have in the Q&A section. We'll get to as many as we can. Now let's begin with a short video introduction of this amazing book courtesy of Aperture Foundation. Thank you. The New Black Vanguard focuses on a history of photography um, that had largely been underrepresented and reported on, starting with the advent of the medium itself, um, thinking about black representation in photography, um, in the space of art and fashion. And what we have is we've taken 15 photographers working in amazing contexts that are vastly different across the world um, who are thinking about the possibility of invention in the space of photography um, as it relates to fashion and art. I think what ties them together is their desire to think about black identity in photography, right? And what has been missing from the space of photography, right? I think Awal um, Arisku has a really great quote um, about you know making blackness as universal as whiteness, right? And so when you look at these images, yes, you should see race because that's important, but you should also see any number of other concerns um, the photographers are raising. What's being challenged is a view of blackness that has been constructed primarily by a white imagination, right? And that is primarily constructed out of stereotype, good or bad, right? And I think that what these photographers are doing in their work is fighting photography with photography. And so it really is about the ways in which um, each photographer is thinking about what representation might mean to them. Often in this culture, when we think about the work of black artists. We almost never think about um, how do we celebrate young black artists. And I wanted to kind of change that. And I wanted to say that what was happening right now with these very young artists is significant. It has shifted our culture. It has shifted how we think about photography. And it has shifted um, who gets to shoot images. These photographers are shooting covers of magazines. They're showing their work in exhibitions and museums and institutional spaces. Um, and they're also creating their own publications. They're creating their own modeling agency. They're creating, you know, they're, they're curating their own shows. You know, I think that you know, when it's all said and done, I think these are going to be the photographers that define this generation in images.
Hey, Christoph, how are you? I'm fine. It's a pleasure to, to meet together on this platform uh, of the DC Foundation. Um, I, I like uh, to, uh, before uh, talking or discussing about the new Black Vanguard, uh, to go back to a talk you gave uh, for TED in 2016. And you were explaining how uh, art reflects and shapes our perception of history and how Black Lives Matter movement impact an emerging Black art and vice versa. Could you tell us about a little bit about more? Because I think that's introduction would be also interesting. Yeah, I, I think I did that TED talk in 2015. And I think that, you know, artists, not just photographers, but artists were sort of trying to figure out um, how to respond to the times. Um, and mm -hmm. I think that yet that, you know, in that moment you had sort of uh, folks sort of starting to sort of um, think about sort of the contemporary moment, think about um, how the contemporary moment sort of affects their uh, artistic practice and sort of uh, making work that sort of responded um, to that moment. You know, I don't think it's it's um, anything that artists haven't been doing, but I think that, you know, there have been a, a group of Black artists um, from, from the sort of the beginning of that moment to now, you know, if mm -hmm. you think about sort of Amy Sherald's recent portrait, um, mm -hmm. uh, Brianna Taylor, you know, I, I think that like those um, artists are sort of, you know, a part of communities and those communities are being affected in a number of different ways. And I think that one of the sort of interesting things that's happening, uh, particularly within the space of Black contemporary art, um, is that response to um, the social and political and cultural moment. Um, I, I, you know, I also think about sort of Amy's work and Kehinde Wiley's work when they, you know, obviously was commissioned to paint Michelle uh, Obama and Barack Obama, the former first lady and president of the United yeah. States. Um, I, I also think about that as being a reflection of the time, right? I, I think that um, the new Black Vanguard sort of comes out of this, right? It sort of comes out of um, the last 10 years or so um, and the politics and cultural sort of uh, moments that sort of have defined that time. Um, and so I think it's about that, you know, it's about sort of those realities, um, but it's also sort of rooted in, um, like other artists, you know, um, the individualistic sort of desires and demands and concerns um, of the artist um, who are making those photographs. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. It's uh, so we, we could go to the second question, which is uh, uh, the new Black Vanguard. And as I discover it, so because I'm so it was since the time as we were able to travel, and uh, I was uh, lucky enough to see the show at the Aperture Foundation <clears throat> and to meet with you at the time. And I was really so impressed about the powerful effect so and something so new that we we were we never had so to see something like that before uh, and uh, I would like could you could you let us know about the birth of the project how did he did he start uh, because we we all know we we knew all the book now and uh, and the traveling of the exhibition and I'm sure it's not uh, finished so it will continue so but uh, how do, what was uh, uh, the beginning? I mean, I think that, you know, I think of the genesis of this project as, you know, really sort of rooted in uh, what I was seeing from young uh, Black photographers um, and sort of this sort of urgency around sort of fusing, uh, say, vernacular photography, sort of uh, local sort of cultural histories, um, uh, influences by photographers um, who had come before them um, into sort of the language of fashion, you know, and uh, sort of using that language to sort of do more than just say, sell to clothes or advertise sort of fashion, which is sort of the traditional ways in which, you know, um, that language has been deployed. 
and to sort of use that as an opportunity to talk about other things, talk about their own personal desires, talk about their own personal identities, talk about their communities, talk about sort of, uh, you know, in the case of Daniel Bossi, talk about uh, sort of uh, the restrictive uh, gay rights laws in uh, Nigeria, you know, like, I think that like there was this sort of use, you know, using of sort of the framework of fashion to sort of exceed uh, some of the sort of uh, traditional ways in which we had thought about sort of that work, right? And it was happening, not just with a few photographers, but it was happening sort of across the world um, in many different places as the book sort of shows with the sort of different, the 15 different photographers who are working from, you know, Los Angeles to Lagos, you know, London to Johannesburg, New York, Atlanta, et cetera, um, the Global South. And so I, I was just sort of fascinated by um, this generation sort of using that framework to sort of redefine their relationships to themselves, their communities, um, their, own, their, own, their own sort of identities, both online and sort of off. Um, and so I just found that to be sort of a very rich uh, sort of thing that was happening. It was how, and it was also happening, I must say, it was happening outside of the traditional sort of uh, institutions that had been sort of um, supporting uh, photography, right? So it was, out, it was happening outside of a museum. It was happening outside of, um, you know, a gallery. It was happening outside of sort of those sort of cultural institutions and really was sort of a, a movement that was happening sort of in studios, but also online, you know, the sort of publishing mm -hmm. of a lot of this stuff on social media. Um, and, you know, and before that, you know, on blogs and, you know, Tumblr and, you know, all these other places. And so I think that there was this sort of digital thing that happened too that allowed for these image makers to sort of have their concerns uh, more readily uh, seen and tracked. And I thought that that was exciting and just sort of having a cursory uh, uh, understanding of the history of sort of black portraiture, knowing that that was a shift that should be sort of examined. And and you uh, so what 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 is also very very interesting is that so so it comes from different perspective from different cities uh, from different continent and uh, are all these uh, photographs uh, together connect over uh, over Instagram or over Facebook or whatever a social media is it was it the platform in fact so which allowed to give to get this kind of really broad vision of what is this uh, creativity in fashion right now and actually so so uh, as you say, you always uh, talk about like um, as a um, uh, the cancellation of the of the boundary between uh, art fashion and photography and even like uh, you could probably talk about film as well mm -hmm. and this is really is it this expression exactly yeah i mean i think that like what also happened i think that was really fascinating was that again these sort of traditional boundaries between sort of art and fashion between you know uh, film Art and photography and photo um, between sort of the museum, the magazine, the gallery, you know, I think that like, you know, this generation without being too general um, is and isn't uh, interested in those boundaries. You know, I think in a lot of ways, um, as we've seen sort of our personal um, relationships to those boundaries change, you know, boundaries mm -hmm. around sexuality, boundaries around identity, boundaries mm -hmm. around, you know, just mm -hmm. sort of our own personal sort of societies have been shifting, you know, um, around those questions. I think that the image makers just brought that into their practices, right? And sort of um, defied sort of, you know, the, the sort of thinking around like, okay, you could be an art photographer or you can be a fashion photographer, but not both, right? Um, and I, I, think, I, I think one of the things that I, I think it's important to sort of mention here, I think that was largely a binary that had existed um, in a lot of ways for black photographers, but not white photographers, right? I, I think that if you think about Richard Avedon, right? Mm -hmm. Like he worked in both, right? And, yeah, yeah, and there yeah. are other photographers, uh, Irving Penn, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. who've worked that way for a very long time. Roe Etheridge, you know, um, more contemporary voice, you know, who've worked that way. And so I think that like part of it was also just sort of um, those photographers sort of saying that we're not going to uh, exist in a binary that no one else is existing in, right? We, we're going to do both or we're going to blend styles and we're going to sort of 
try to create our own languages as, as best we can by you know, rooting ourselves in a history, right? And so I think one of the important, you know, really sort of important things about these photographs and about uh, this book is that it's a part of a lineage, right? I think that, you know, mm -hmm. you, sort of, you can't look at them and not look at someone like James Van Der Zee. You can't look at, you know, um, A. Walariscu and not think about Kwame Burswat. You can't look at, you know, um, Renel Madrino and not think about sort of uh, Jamel Shabazz. You know, I think there's a lot of sort of yeah, yeah. history and context and lineage here that sort of connects these photographs and these photographers to um, a wider sort of um, canon of, of, of image making um, that, you know, in, in their own sort of ways, you know, uh, it's just sort of dealing with um, photography, which is to say the technologies um, of their times, right? Photography is essentially um, mm -hmm. the story of technological advancement. Um, and then so as, as sort of cameras gotten better and has, they've been sort of been put in our pockets and as they have like, yeah, we've yeah, gotten yeah. these, you know, platforms like Instagram where we sort of have all become a lot more um, visually literate because we're, 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 we're sort of dealing with images in a way that we hadn't before, right? And so I think that like, that's why you also have um, an explosion of photographers, right? Like in this way, and who are sort of making these images and publishing them in, in the ways that they are publishing them, you know? I think they're yeah. also interested in sort of the printed, you know, the printed page, right? A lot of these image makers work in magazines and, mm -hmm. you know, often have um, their mag, their images on the cover of, you know, Vogue and Time and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. all the world sort of leading cultural magazines. And so I think they're also interested in those as well. And I think that their interest in those magazines has to do with um, sort of a history of uh, erasure, a history of Black, right? And sort of uh, using their images as an opportunity to sort of uh, rethink the sort of um, presentation of uh, beauty and fashion and sort of and whose so, bodies belong and, yeah, and all yeah, of yeah, those yeah, questions yeah. that um, for a very long time until, you know, relatively recently um, were uh, defined by a group of, you know, mostly white curators, editors. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Beyonce say uh, she uh, she was never uh, uh, shot by a black photographer before uh, Tyler uh, Mitchell. Wait, what happened? Uh, um, uh, Beyonce. Uh huh. So she she was just shot by a white photographer. So yeah, I mean, but, but, so Beyonce, sure, but think about someone like Naomi Campbell, for example, right? Yeah, or Naomi Campbell, exactly. So yeah, Campbell yeah. Addy, who is in one of the photographers in the show. And mm -hmm. in the book was the first black fashion photographer to shoot her for a fashion magazine. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. was not, you know, the Campbell's what, 25, 26, you know, I mean, yeah. I, this, I think this is, it shows this sort of systemic and long-term um, sort of uh, erasure that has happened, which has allowed for, you know, a large part of our, you know, image-based consciousness to be shaped by mostly white, mostly male photographers. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think that like, even women, right? Like this is even sort of beyond the sort of racial aspects, like women have, you, yeah. know, it, you know, have contributed very little um, exactly. to the yeah. historical record in that way, you know? And so I think it's about, um, and so, yeah, so I think, I think in sort of the way that we've been re-examining um, sort of all of our structures of, you know, sort of inequality inside the cultural industry, I think that like, you know, this book is one of those things that sort of, you know, speaks to that, but it's also just, you know, simply about um, the creativity of a group of young black, you know, artists um, mm -hmm. who, um, are sort of thinking about sort of those politics, but are also thinking about sort of their love of, of photography and thinking about sort of their love of image makings and, thinking, and, and <laughs> trying to add to that rich history, you know? Yeah, and so yeah. I think I think it does two things. It's operating on, you know, um, on, on a couple of different levels. Um, how did you select uh, uh, all these, these 15 art, uh, artists? Because it could be could have been more, or um, so. Uh, how did you did you decide at the end 
who is going to be in? I mean, we did a lot of research. You know, there are a lot of image makers out there. And I think that what I was trying to do was show the sort of differences in sort of their approaches. And so, so one from one image, image maker to the next, you get a real sort of distinct sort of set of concerns, a real sort of distinct aesthetic. Um, and I think that that for me was sort of, um, that was important because, you know, this is, you know, it, it's, it, it really is sort of about a community, but within a community, there are differences, right? And so I wanted to sort of make sure that those differences were being seen. And I also, I think I wanted to just frankly, um, make sure that we were not sort of thinking about sort of what's happening um, as sort of a monolithic sort of approach, you know? I think that all of these image makers and even ones that are sort of in the exhibition but are not in the book, um, are approaching photography from their sort of, you know, point of view, you know, which is individualistic, you know, and so you have different sort of uh, concerns, you know, you have sort of different sort of uh, styles of, you know, or genres of photographer being sort of played with and sort of being mixed in with each other, you know, I think about Awal Arisku and I think about sort of the way that he is sort of thinking about the still life, right, in relationship to you. Uh, fashion in relationship to sort of ideas of beauty in relationship to sort of uh, the present and in history and you know and sort of thinking about that you know uh, AWOL is um, is a uh, family from Ethiopia he grew up in New York now lives in Los Angeles and you know and sort of thinking about sort of um, symbols um, uh, cultural sort of artifacts you know sort of um, from uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of albums, rap albums to um, sort of King Tut and sort of thinking about, you know, the busk of King Tut and sort of thinking about sort of how do you reroute those symbols um, and how do you sort of think about their histories um, and sort of in a, in a contemporary way, you know, I think AWOL is also someone who's thinking about sort of just the history of mm. photography when he's sort of in, in those sort of still lives where he sort of uses the Shirley Kodak, you know, card and sort of, you know, to talk about sort of the calibration of skin, right? And who's yeah, been yeah, left yeah. out of that conversation, right? And so I think there's a lot, there's a richness to these images and to these image makers um, that I, that really sort of, you know, after looking at hundreds of them, um, these were the ones that sort of, you know, had in my opinion, um, at the time of us making the book in 2018, um, it was published in 2019, but we spent about a year on it. Um, you know, they, these were the sort of defining voices, you know, and I think that well, to the credit of sort of this book and to the credit of sort of the culture that these photographers have created around their images, that, you know, other image makers have also sort of uh, emerged in the sort of last few years that are also thinking about these questions um, in a sort of very distinct way and sort of adding their sort of, uh, you know, voice to um, the chorus. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, so I, 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 I think so we could spend uh, the, the night for me here to discuss. <laughs> Uh, I, I will go now to um, images I select. Uh, I select uh, three uh, images from the 15 artists. And, and the first one is uh, about uh, Nadine Ijeboer. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, she, a relation to beauty and to representation. And she's the first black uh, woman photographer who were invited uh, to make the cover of Vogue. Uh, first, uh, if I'm not wrong, UK, then Spain, and that mm -hmm. US, and this is what you what you um, you talk about that before. And so, uh, Vogue exists uh, since now over 129 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, could you let us know a little bit more about our uh, approach and also the idea of like so uh, to um, to to get back to the control of the representation of of blackness, but in a term of beauty as well. Yeah, I mean, I think Nadine is a, by the way, she has a great show in Berlin right now um, of her own sort of a solo exhibition. Um, and, you know, I, I think that Nadine is a photographer who I met actually through Aperture. We both contributed to 
um, a fashion issue of Aperture in 2018, and we sat on a panel together. And I met her. I met her through Aperture, and was mm -hmm. just sort of fascinated by the way that she, with the way at the time she was thinking. This is before Vogue, before you know all of that stuff. She was thinking about sort of um, the representation um, of women, and the representation of women, sort of black women and women of color in front of the lens, but also behind the lens, right? And so when you're talking, so you're dealing with a sort of dual erasure there, right? And so Nadine has sort of um, created, it's really funny because I, I think that this image is of a male, but most of her images are actually of women. <laughs> um, like the vast majority of her images are women. Um, yeah, but I love this one. Yeah, no, because I mean, it has something like, uh, it could be it could be a male or a female. It yeah, there's, there is a there is a um, and and you know sort of there is a sort of uh, level of sort of you know um, yeah like imagination here that you can sort of apply I suppose. Um, but you know I think Nadine is one of those people that was very sort of clear about what she was doing from the jump, and I think that um, having that sort of you know um, that clarity of vision um really sort of allowed her to sort of produce these sort of really uh sort of you know she, she's always shooting in these sort of like lush and fantastic landscapes and sort of um in these sort of really sort of you know colorful and high gloss sort of you know images um and yeah i mean i think that that you know she sort of and then going on to sort of be the first woman to shoot a cover of british vogue um, after sort of, you know, um, a period, I don't know how long British Vogue has been around, but, you know, for a very long time, and they, they had not, um, had employed, you know, sort of, you know, black women in that way, and very few women in general, um, you know, it was really sort of great to sort of see that and see her vision sort of represented in, on the cover of that magazine. And I think that that was significant because, you know, uh, the biggest platform in photography is, you know, sort of the cover of a fashion magazine. And so I think that like, it is just important that, you know, a number of voices are contributing to um, that platform and contributing to that and holding that space. And um, yeah, and I, I think that Nadine, you know, in doing that really sort of um, brought her concerns to the magazine. Hmm. Thank you. The, the next one I took is, uh, it was a, for me also a kind of complementary uh, a vision. It's a uh, uh, Rene uh, Medrano. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Medrano, uh, which I, I like a lot. And um, uh, especially- yeah, it's, of the model. it's of the model Slick Woods. Um, Rene is, uh, is uh, Dominican, but grew up in the Bronx in New York. And a lot of her mm -hmm. sort of images is sort of kind of thinking about um, sort of her neighborhood and thinking about sort of, um, you know, the way that she sort of is sort of thinking about sort of the Bronx and sort of these soft, you know, soft and but also mm -hmm. you know, hard sort of terms. And so I think you see that in these images. I think one of the things that I love about Renelle's work as it sort of evolved, you know, is that she's really also, in, you know, interested in sort of a domestic, you know, sort of a domestic space you know, sort yeah. of the, the space of the apartment, right? And sort of the sort of texture of an apart, you know, of the apartment, right? Um, and, and how that sort of informs um, the person who are decorated, right? And sort of an interiority, right? So what you're seeing here is sort of a double sort of instance of interiority, right? You see this sort of, uh, you see it's like sort of laying on a bed, um, sort of yeah. inside of an apartment, right? An interior space, but you also see this sort of very intimate moment. She's pregnant in this, photograph. Um, and so you, so you have this sort of interplay there of um, notions of interiority. Um, and I think you always have that in Renelle's images, you know, I also think you have sort of this, this sort of challenge to femininity in her images, right. And so it's mm -hmm. not always about sort of what sort of fashion and advertisement had said about the woman, right? There's this softness, mm. this, you know, what, et cetera, et cetera. But there's also, you know, sort of masculine qualities here, right? In women and there's That's masculine it. qualities in sort of the representation that has not been um, sort of fully explored. And so I think you also have that in Renelle's images, you have this sort of, uh, sort of the, you know, sort of the exploration of, you know, the masculine woman in some ways, you know? And so I think that like, there are, um, even when within sort of, you know, uh, women photographers, you know, taking the camera and showing their world, I think there's some challenges to um, the way that women have been represented, 
in their <laughs> in their work. And and you uh, um, you uh, you oh, wrote also one more thing because if you because most of the images that the available images that we have that we know of of women the iconic images the images on magazines the images in museums the images you know that are, are frequently you know shown in galleries are taken by men and so you know like like it, it's important that you know when we're having these conversations i think one of the things that's really sort of important and as the exhibition travel has given us an opportunity to sort of really sort of uh, explore the layers sort of embedded in these images and are embedded in sort of uh, the concerns of these photographers. Um, and uh, <clears throat> you um, you spoke as well about a relationship from uh, Renel to uh, uh, history and uh, to historical position or maybe more historical position like uh, Lee's uh, uh, Johnson Arthur, uh, mm -hmm. which is a kind of like connection exactly. also to 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 reality, but but in a soft way, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, just so. Keep the, the, uh, the um, yeah yeah I think I think that there is a, again it's a lineage I think Liz you know Jonathan Arthur is a part of that lineage I think Michaelin Thomas is part of that lineage I think obviously the most sort of uh, the direct sort of reference is Dina Lawson obviously you know mm -hmm. I think that yeah, like yeah. you know I, I think that 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 again that's why it matters that their images are published because they also affect younger a generation you know, a younger generation, sort of carrying on some of the concerns and some of the ideas that were, you know, first expressed in sort of those three women's, you know, photos, you know? Yeah. Um, the next image, and it will be my, my last image, uh, is uh, Daniel uh, uh, Obesi. So as you, uh, so you, you spoke about him so before and, um, uh, and uh, this relation to so for me it was also important to have a, a photographer from uh, from Africa. He's based in Lagos, I think, if I'm not wrong. And uh, uh, his relation to to the um, kind of like other tradition, which is this uh, Afrofuturism, uh, which is, I, I discover with you, uh, uh, and also the relationship to um, uh, to this kind of gender fluidity that were still existing in in uh, in Nigeria, especially. Uh, so, how could you could you let us know a little bit more about this? idea of creating a new mythology or a new point of view of uh, what is uh, this? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I think that like, you know, some of, uh, I think, you know, one of the things that's sort of important to mention is that, yeah, no, I think that, you know, Daniel Obasi, you know, is sort of, uh, you know, sort of thinking about questions of, or these notions of Afrofuturism and sort of, you know, creating sort of, you know, it's almost like a myth making so that sort of happens in his images. You know, he's sort of creating new stories and creating, you know, new characters and 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 doing that in photography, but also in film. I mean, he makes really sort of alluring, beautiful films, you know, some of which are also on, you know, exhibition in the, ex, you know, on show in the exhibition and okay. will be on show in, in Arl. But, you know, I think it really is about sort of thinking about a future, thinking about sort of what that might look like, what, how do you sort of define that in images, right? And, and that happens through sort of a critical fabulation, right? I think that like you see that in his images, I think you see that in sort of the stories that he tell and, and sort of the, but it, it is also, it's like he draws on sort of uh, traditional sort of mythology within Nigerian culture as well. You know, and so he's sort of using those that as sort of a point of departure to sort of create these images, you know, and, and I think that like, you know, again, you know, it's so distinct from say Daniel, ba from, from uh, uh, Stephen Tayo, who's also a Nigerian photographer. They went to school together, actually. They're in the book together and they're great friends, but Stephen Tayo sort of um, uh, takes photographs mostly uh, documentary and style on a street, you know, and, you know, just in, in that, and does that mostly in Lagos. And so it's just like two creatives in the same city or part of the same community thinking about photography in vastly different ways and, mm -hmm. and, and sort of really enacting visions um, on the image that are sort of different, um, that tell sort of different sort of, you know, again, stories. And, you know, I think that, you know, like, 
you know, Daniel and, you know, the use of makeup and the use of certain fabrics and, you know, like all of those sort of components are sort of meticulously um, constructed in the image to sort of talk about sort of this new world, this new idea around sort of a future um, that is rooted in um, sort of uh, cultural touchstones. Mm -mm. Uh, which is a very kind of <clears throat> a new perspective, and uh, I, I like it very much. So I was really impressed by this image. <clears throat> it could be, uh, you know, it's it, this image is timeless. So and this is mm -hmm. what is for me like so so strong. I think if if you keep an image in your uh, a good image is an image you are able to keep in your mind. So and mm -hmm. uh, and it uh, it brings you somewhere else. And uh, mm -hmm. um, but it also uh, might, you know it, it really is it's what's sort of interesting. It's that, you know, I was on the, I did a, some interview for a magazine for, for the Arl, uh, you know, show. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, rep, the reporter, uh, writer referenced this image and, and uh, Nadine's image of, of, that we showed earlier as well. Mm -hmm. And, she, uh, she, you know, she said, oh, it's, it's, it could be about migration. And I just never it's ever thought of that, you know, like I never thought about sort of, the like to me those images are so far removed from sort of uh european sort of migration uh scenario or situation um but you know i think that like depending on the context that these images you know i think that i think that's also a part of a good image is that it's able to evoke you know something of you know reality and something of the moment you know and of that place and so as this show has traveled um, you know, from New York to Australia to Doha, now going to Arl, I think that what's one of the things that's been so interesting is to, to, to have these sort of dialogues, these dialogues sort of with the local sort of um, folks who are, you know, see the show and who have, who bring their own perspective shaped by those sort of cultural histories and, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think I think that for me is the power in these images is that that they are able to sort of um, spark you know conversation um, and have a, you know they, that that they are that they are generous enough sort of in their making that they are allowed to sort of allude to um, a lot of different sort of uh, things and connect us to a lot of different cultures mm. and. Uh, um, <clears throat> So we, so it was uh, uh, my last image. Uh, I had just a question regarding this, the concept of the show, which has, uh, you had a, a main part of the show and you had a part of called a saloon, uh, with, with, which was a kind of like a, a extension uh, as you, you will recreate it in all. So mm -hmm. uh, how did you proceed over the, uh, so over the selection and, uh, and after oh, we go like to the lawn stall, like this, yes. lawn stall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that like, again, I wanted this uh, to be, you know, what I call uh, a living exhibition, which I mean is that like, you know, these are young photographers, you know, I, like most of them are in their 20s, um, mm -hmm. which means that like, this is an ever evolving sort of and rapidly mm -hmm. evolving um, <laughs> sort of uh, movement of, of image makers. And so I think that like one way to sort of, um, keep that sort of aspect sort of alive in sort of the exhibition is to sort of continuously to sort of update sort of a salon style wall where you have sort of photographers, you know, maybe working locally and those, you know, in those mm -hmm. countries mm -hmm. sort of involved, um, and have their work exhibited. Um, sometimes it's photographers that, you know, I sort of discovered or came upon after um, the book came out and who've like have really interesting things to say. There's one, Amber Pinkerton, uh, a British photographer who, you know, just a very clear vision. Um, and, and, you know, sort of, and sort of to have sort of that as well, you know, I think that, I think, yeah. And I also think that a lot more young quote unquote art photographers are doing uh, 
are, are less sort of uh, concerned about, again, that binary, and they are starting to sort of make images in uh, in this sort of fashion space as well. You know, I think about, you know, there are people like Shakif, you know, it's a photographer, um, mm. traditional sort of background went to Yale and, you know, John mm. Edmonds is another one and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, these, there, there's, I think there's a real sort of, um, there's a real sort of interest in this space. And I think that like updating um, that salon style wall allows to show that this is an ongoing thing that like yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. a finite sort of exhibition and it is just these 15 photographers, but it actually is, it includes a, a, a lot, a, a real community of photographers. Mm. So we uh, we still have a um, little bit time for for a question uh, from from the from the audience. Uh, so as you say, it's a it's a living project. So will it be? Will you will you make a second volume for, from from the like uh, from uh, the new Black Vanguard? Will it be a, a second book? Will it be a second book? Um, it's a question. I <laughs> all the time <laughs> yeah um, you know, I, guess. I think that i don't know if i you know i think that what i would like to happen is that the photographers who are in the exhibition and in the uh book uh to sort of do their own books you know and to sort of have sort of in-depth sort of look at sort of their photography i mean we we could not include you know sort of full breadth in depth of their of their um of their concerns and of their sort of young practices. And so I hope that like, if anything, uh, instead of me doing another book, I think that like, you know, we should have some monographs from some of these image makers to sort of explore their worlds a bit more. Um, and I think I, 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 am, I am absolutely committed to, to that, you know, sort of in the short term is in making sure that, you know, that, you know, why shouldn't we have a book from Daniel Abbasi? You know, like, why shouldn't we have, um, a monograph from A. Walrisku. Why shouldn't you know? Like I think that for me is sort of the next sort of phase. The of next this, step. Yeah. Sure that artists that these artists are sort of their own worlds are fully sort of um, critically engaged. Um, and so you know, I've been harassing Aperture and other publishers to make that happen. Yeah, thank and you. If any of your publishers, let me know. I, I have <laughs> <some> ideas. <laughs> okay. Um... So uh, there's a, um, another question regarding, so uh, does Anton see the trend outside of fashion? I, I think you, you already answered, so. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I'll just briefly, you know, it is a part of a larger cultural moment. I think you also see this in, I mean, I just think that you, you have, you're having an explosion um, of this sort of uh, creativity, you know, even in, you think about film, you know, that's happening in film. I think if you, and even also to like, you know, sports, you know, I think that you have sort of a real grab of the narrative in a way that just was not sort of present before. And so I think about, you know, you know, you know, someone like Naomi Osaka, you know, just the other day sort of, you know, saying, defining the terms of, you know, sort of how she will be engaged, right? And I think that's important. I think that, you know, there's this sort of empowerment that is happening, I think, across sort of, you know, uh, the cultural sort of world as it relates to sort of young Black voices. Um, and I think this is just one part of it. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> so there's, uh, we had a, um, uh, also, um, so we could go maybe a little bit deeper deeper in uh, blurring the boundary between uh, fashion, art, and, and documentary uh, in, in photography. Uh, as it's, uh, as this moment, as you say, it's, it's a special moment in film, in photography, a little bit everywhere. Uh, which is uh, it's it's very interesting how we we could go actually uh, to um, from uh, fashion until um, an art praxis actually and uh, evoking uh, also a documentary part which has a, a really stronger political content and mm -hmm. yeah please I mean I think that like 
that, you know, I think that like you, by blowing the boundaries, what I mean, you sort of simply is that using different elements of photography in one in the space of, you know, sort of one image, right? And I think that, you know, I can sort of, you know, I can give an example, you know, I think that, you know, or the example that I did use was AWOL's work, you know, like this sort of still life photograph that sort of is thinking about sort of, you know, a still life photograph of that sort of long history tradition, but then also yeah. is thinking about sort of um, the camera as a technology, but then is also thinking about sort of notions and standards of beauty um, through his use of sort of cultural objects, um, the African mask, you know, the busk of Nefertiti. Um, and then you also think about sort of, you know, and so that, but then he also might have a, a, a shoe, you know, sort of also in that sort of alluding to sort of fashion, right? And so I think a fashion photography, right? And so I think that like you have all of that sort of in the space of one image. And I and so it's it's not, it's less, I see the question here. And so it's less about sort of like, like, um, you know, like sustainability and, and things like that, like those sort of things I like, but it's more about sort of literally thinking about sort of the formal aspects of photo making and the formal sort of, uh, genres um, and you know of that medium and how these photographers are um, thinking about those histories and thinking about sort of the, the the histories of each you know and sort of thinking about how that can sort of enter uh, how that can sort of be a part of uh, how they make images you know I think about Tyler Mitchell and Tyler Mitchell sort of in his last exhibition um, sort of created this, you know, this clothing line, like this mm -hmm. physical clothing line that sort I of- I remember, yeah, it was just yeah, beautiful. Know, that, that, at ICP, yeah? Yeah, yeah at ICP. And, yeah, yeah. and so it alluded to obviously Gordon Park sort of you, you know, sort of photographing of the clothing yeah. line yeah, yeah, and those yeah. sort of documentary images. But then you looked at the images and they were like, sort of a mixture of like fashion and landscape and all, you know, so so I think it's, it really, for me, it's about sort of the, the, the use of the sort of, medium itself in sort of the at different aspects of, you know, landscape photography, documentary photography, fashion photography, art photography, like whatever those words mean, and sort of like bringing those together in the space of one, you know, photograph or installation. Yeah, it's a very good example because uh, actually, as you say, so it could be a, uh, uh, it could be a so um, a south of, uh, of uh, Europe in Italy or in Spain. So, uh -huh. uh, uh, but at the same time, it's also an exhibition and, uh, what was also for me very interesting is like, so actually the exhibition uh, makes the viewer, uh, the, the exhibition of Tyler was making the viewer really active in the mm -hmm. process of discovering the images. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was not a regular show and you were like, you had to move through the uh, this uh, uh, kind of like curtain or a piece mm -hmm. of, of fabric just to discover and to create your own story. And this is this uh, kind of uh, idea to create a storytelling is also something very strong in this new generation. Yeah, and I also think, I totally agree with that. I also think that the way that he sort of implicates your body in the exhibition, right? So you're moving hmm. through, thinking yeah. about, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's, it's not only about sort of the representations that you see um, sort of in that particular installation, but it's really, it's hilarious because he just texts me about this particular work. And so <laughs> like, it's, you know, my, like it goes down my screen and he's like, you ask you a question about, it. anyway, you, you see those, those representations and then yeah. you're moving through to sort of see those representations. So it's also about sort of how you move through the world, sort of looking at these other, you know, figures move through the world, you know, capture moving through the world, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that like, again, you know, if I know that we're, we're, you know, we're coming to the last, you know, question here, but I do think that it really is about sort of the layers sort of embedded in these photographs yeah, yeah. and sort of these scenarios of, you know, when you're talking about exhibition making, that really sort of is about sort of blackness, but it's also about the viewer and sort of, um, and sort of trying to figure out how best to um, explore that relationship between the looked at and the look and, and the looking. The person doing the looking. Yeah, and it was a very nice uh, experience. <laughs> so, yeah, it was also um, cool. <laughs> so I think it was the last question. Uh, um, so, uh, 
we are we are giving uh, back uh, the voice to uh, Alice. Well, thank you both so much. This was great. And we will be record, we have recorded this conversation. So if you've missed any part of it, you can find it online at lucyfoundation.org under our program, Lucy Talks. We'll, we will also be sure to link um, Aperture's website where you can purchase the book if you don't have it already. And also more information on the upcoming exhibition at Arl. So thank you guys so much again for this. And we hope to be seeing you guys soon. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, Antoine. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you all. It was a pleasure. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye. Also, the show. The show opens in Arl, June, July fourth. July fourth, exactly. Yeah. Until uh, July, until uh, September twenty sixth. Yes. So, so you have you plenty of time. That way, please come. Yes, please. Bye. And, and we start a photo slam so with Antoine. So it's the idea it says last word about this uh, uh, experience also to integrate some younger generation. We will make a photo slam in R. Yes. We had an open call and we will have probably a, approximately 10 photographers performing on a stage, on an antique stage with uh, we could host 2000 people uh, to show their own work. And this is, I should thank Antoine again for that. Thanks. Very cool. Perfect. See you there. Bye. Thank Bye. you all. Bye-bye.